Hi, I'm Brian Davidson. I'm the playwright of Las Instrucciones with 24th Street Theater. If you want to learn more about the play, watch this video. I didn't want to go into the theater. I wanted to be a poet and I wanted to write fiction. And I was studying that in college at Loyola Marymount University. And my, my uh, instructor took me aside and said, you know, I'm reading your fiction. You're not really writing fiction. What you're actually writing is monologues. I think you'd be happier in the theater department and sent me over there. And uh, he was right. Um, he, he said, first of all, they have better parties, um, which is true. I also love something about theater that, that it's, it's inherently collaborative, whereas I think fiction is so, can be so isolating. And um, what I discovered very quickly was that I, I love that additive nature of theater, is that you, you put some words on a page as a blueprint or a roadmap, and other people who are, are smarter than you and more talented than you, actors, directors, designers, take that blueprint and build something beautiful out of it. So I love the idea that, that those words on the page were, were a catalyst for something bigger than myself. And I, I really enjoyed that process so much. So um, uh, I, I definitely love writing for the theater. My process for writing and creating a play tends to be very research driven. I, I find myself attracted to historical narratives. Um, I love writing about other time periods as a metaphor to reflect or a mirror to reflect back on our own current time period. So for example, for 24th Street Theater, we did a play called Hansel and Gretel Bluegrass, which was set in uh, coal country during the, the, the mining strikes in uh, the, the, the start of the 20th century. And it was a way for us to talk about things like food insecurity and, and loneliness and deportations indirectly. So I, I, I like to d dive in history as a, as a metaphor and a mirror. So I, I tend to start a lot with, with research. Um, I outline like crazy. I, you know, pin cards to, to bulletin boards and just keep resorting and resorting and resorting. And then, um, at, at a certain point, I just shift gears and start free writing. I think that for me, a play really comes to life when I can hear the characters' voices. That's an exciting moment. So I do have a background, not just in theater, but also in animation. I was at Disney Feature Animation for 10 years. I'm currently at Skydance Animation. And I think that um, the way that animation has influenced me, first of all, has been to really drive to the visual. As you'll see in Las Instrucciones, it's a very visual play. Um, there, it is language driven, but also the, I think the, the emotions are carried by, by the visuals and the actions and the gestures. We have an incredibly talented actress who's also an amazing dancer. And again, um, being able to write a part for her that has no words, but is just purely physical. I think that comes out of my, my experience with animation. I think also, with animation, you're aware of the impact that your stories have on your audience. Um, when I was working at Disney, I would have kids show up on my doorstep on Halloween dressed as a character that I'd help put out into the world in, this, in a small way. And so it just always reminds me of how important storytelling is for all of us, how it inspires us, how it you know um, brings us together. I've known about 24th Street Theater for quite a long time. I, I've always been involved with arts education, and of course, 24th Street Theater is dedicated to that cause. They're they're very heavily involved with Los Angeles Unified School District, and they're they're big big partners. Uh, I think that what they do is so remarkable. Their mission is to get kids excited about theater and see theater as a place to express themselves and find community. So I've always been aware of them, and I got to know Jan Deb quite well just by being part of the community. Uh, beyond that. As I mentioned, I wrote a, a play for them called Hansel and Gretel Bluegrass, which was an adaptation of Hansel and Gretel set in, uh, set in uh, the, the coal strike period of, of the turn of the century. What I love about them is that they, they want to create emotionally sophisticated, resonant programming for families. They really respect the emotional integrity of young people and they don't talk down to them. They realize that, that kids have a lot going on in their lives and want to create theater that speaks to them. So I, I really, I really love that mission. Also, I just love Jan and Deb as collaborators. They're, they're such great collaborators to work with. So about my play, Las Instrucciones is a play for three characters. One is just a, a, a narrative voice 
And at its core, it's a family story. When Deb approached me, we started brainstorming what we wanted to say, and I think what kind of play the world needs right now. And something we all circled around was the idea that in the midst of a pandemic with 200,000 American lives lost and, and many more around the world, we didn't have a collective space to mourn or to grieve or to recognize that loss. And that was something that we were thinking about very deeply. And Deb mentioned that there's a, a, a small town in, uh, in Mexico that was hit very hard by the flu epidemic of 1918. And they know how hard they were hit because they kept excellent records. So it was a, it's an interesting study in how, how the flu spread. The other thing that we were thinking about too was the Dia de los Muertos celebration that 24th Street Theater always does, which is a huge community event. It gets bigger and bigger every year. It's a great way for the community to come together and to celebrate. Um, and the fact that they couldn't do it in public this year because of the pandemic was, was really sad to all of us. It's, they're gonna do a virtual Dia de los Muertos, but there's something about the fact that it's not, you know, in the streets that, that was a little sad. And so we started thinking about what if this play takes place on Day of the Dead, and it's, um, it's a way to remember those the, that we've lost. So the play basically is the instructions. It's for how to, how to build um, Uno Ofrenda, an altar for Day of the Dead. And uh, I'm not a Mexican American. I, I'm not of that culture. So I want to make sure that I, I represented that culture with with authenticity and integrity. So I spent a lot of time talking to Jesus Castaños Chima, who works at 24th Street Theater, who builds altars. He has one in his home. He's from Mexico City. And he's also very instrumental in building the, the altar at 24th Street Theater for their Day of the Dead celebration. And he talked through what each level of the altars mean and what the process is and some guiding principles. Um, there are some things in my play that, that I stole directly from talking to him. Um, he said, you don't know when it's finished. It's like a painting. You've, it's finished when you feel it's finished. And that's, that's in the play. So he was instrumental in helping me wrap my head around this. But most of all, it's a, it's a play about remembrance and remembering those we've lost and, and staying close to them. And I'm, in thinking about the audience and what I want them to take away from the play, again, I go back to this idea that I want us to have a place to express grief collectively, to mourn, to recognize those we've lost, but also a way to feel connected to those that who've who've gone on. I think that's the most important thing. Um, I, you know, I, I think that goes back to this this the spirit of what Day of the Dead is, and it goes back to what Twenty Fourth Street Theater has always done, which is keeping people connected. So I, I want people to feel, you know, I, I personally I, today I feel lost. I feel kind of rudderless. And I think we're all struggling with this in different ways. And I, if nothing else, I want um, this, this small play and these amazing actors and performers to just create a space for people to feel like they can come together and connect. Theater is so much about community and bringing people together. And I think that we've all been struggling with this. We, we feel like we've been isolated as individuals and as a community. It's, it's been a struggle for folks. So I, I applaud I applaud this festival for bringing people together. I also think that what it shows is the resilience of the theater community. People have been lamenting the death of theater for 2000 years and theater just keeps coming back in different ways that surprise us and inspire us. So I, I love the spirit behind this festival. I'm thrilled to be part of this festival and to get to work with 24th Street Theater. I think that anything nowadays that brings us out of our bubbles, brings us out of our houses, and makes those connections is gonna be good for our souls. Um, I know that people are struggling and I know that people are having a hard time with so many things that are happening in our society right now. And so I think theater is a way for us to come together and, and share experiences and tell stories together and laugh and cry. If you, the audience, uh, are intrigued and want to learn more or check out the play, I encourage you to go to the Together LA Virtual Stage Festival website and check it out.